Now at 7, what did we know and when did we know it? A variation on that famous Watergate era question. But this time, we're referring to the Holocaust and how it was covered in South Florida newspapers at the time. Tomorrow night, a special event on that topic in North Miami Beach, and I'll be moderating. And one of the esteemed panelists tomorrow night is Dr. Paul George, who is resident historian at History Miami Museum. I'm so glad to finally meet you. Thanks so Thank much for really. being here, and I'm looking forward to the event tomorrow night. So when did South Floridians begin to read about what was being beginning to happen in Europe at the beginning of, 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 of Hitler's rise? Well, really, from the moment Hitler was appointed chancellor January 30, 1933, you see in newspaper accounts, the Miami Herald, the Miami Daily News, as it was called then, uh, different accounts. The, the Herald described him as fiery, a fiery new leader. Uh, the news had a little more trepidation about it. The Fort Lauderdale News, though, said the brown shirts have taken control of Germany. Mm. The last sentence of an editorial, the day after he was chancellor, was, this may have major implications for the world, which was interesting. You know, way back then in 1933. Hmm. Okay, so there were some, some, uh, some editorial writers and some reporters here who right. seemed to recognize uh, what might be happening there in Germany. Right. What about South Florida's Jewish community back then? What did they look like? Did they sound an alarm at all? The community was quite small at the outset of the 30s, grew enormously by the end of the 30s, especially on Miami Beach. And uh, a rising number of synagogues, a rising number of rabbis beginning to, to look askance what's going on over there in Germany. And there is, there is deep concern. Um, so much so that uh, by the time the war set in, we find so many Jewish enlistees in the armed forces coming from the Miami area. Now, Miami played a central role in, in, in one of the stories, and, and I was honored to speak with, uh, with a gentleman who was sort of center, uh, central in this story about, about a ship of Jewish refugees right. uh, who left Europe to try to escape Nazi uh, Germany, uh, and that ship tried to come into the United States. Uh, Herbie Carliner is a South Floridian who was on board as a young boy. Uh, the ship was turned away from Port Miami. SS St. Louis, and it was you know, one of the huge bad moments in this whole situation. Uh, just uh, and many of those folks went back to Europe and were killed in the Holocaust. Uh, and you could see the ship from the shoreline of Miami Beach. Uh, there was a small gathering in Bayfront Park in, in behalf of, hey, look, we got to bring these folks in. But there was a pretty strong, I think, bias against refugees in general at the time. There had been three really restrictive laws passed in the 1920s. And I think we still had that mindset in this country at that point. Was there a turning point when things began to change, where people here in South Florida began to, to realize uh, you know, that this was a serious problem, what was happening to the Jews and so many others uh, in, in Hitler's Germany? I think Kristallnacht in uh, November of 1938 was a real turning point. The night of the broken glass. The night of the broken glass, a real turning point. Like, my God, uh, there were headlines, not so much a Miami paper, it's a Dallas paper, hysterical Nazis, you know, have just unloaded on the Jewish population of Germany. Mm. Uh, not as much in the local papers as in some other parts of the country, but uh, there was that awareness. And of course, by the end of the 30s, there's a significant Jewish population on Miami Beach. Well, I wanted to ask you about that in closing, because Jewish immigrants, many of them Holocaust survivors, ended up coming to South right. Florida and playing such a central role in the development of Miami Beach, Boca Raton, and other areas here mm. uh, in South South Florida, um, is their presence still felt? Well, their numbers have dwindled so much because of age and attrition, but uh, they really laid the, the landscape for uh, a, a growing awareness of what had happened and also that this can never happen again. Uh, great contributors uh, to their whole mindset. Well, I'm very excited about tomorrow night's event with Dr. Paul George and others. Americans and the Nazi threat. What did Floridians know? It'll be held tomorrow night at 8 at Beth Torah in North Miami Beach. And come on out and join us. And I'll see you there, Dr. George. Looking forward to it very much, Rick. Thank you.